Today in the news, we've got a brand new room heater from NVIDIA, Far Cry 6 makes RTX stick, and Intel disappoints. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Before we start, let me thank today's sponsor, Filmora. To download Filmora, just head over to the link in the description down below and choose the version of the OS that you want to download it for. Then just click free download. Filmora is a pretty fun and powerful video editing app with some pretty cool features and effects. Here's what I made with the full version of the software. Pretty cool, right? He's the double. There's also cool features like motion tracking and AR stickers. So go check it out, try the free version, and once again, thanks Filmora. Let's get started with Nvidia. Now there's been some rumors stewing around about new GPUs coming up early next year. New might be a big word here, but basically Nvidia would bring their super line of GPUs back for pretty much the entire lineup from the RTX 3060 to the RTX 3090. Check out this video up here for more information on the specs of these things. In any case, it seems like the highest end model, the 3090 Super, would actually be called the 3090 Ti, and videocards.com has some new information about it. First, it might require a new power connector. Now, that could mean that it would need a replacement for the special 12-pin connector provided by NVIDIA. I mean, Molex does make a 16-pin version, but apparently it could also be a new connection related to the PCIe Gen 5 specification. Now, I tried to get my hands on the PCIe SIG spec sheet for Gen 5 to see if I could find information information related to the power draw possible through a PCIe Gen 5 slot, but I just couldn't find anything. I could pay the $3,000 fee, but what do you know? I'm broke. All I know is that the new fingers on the cards themselves will be slightly thinner and ever so slightly shorter. So maybe that's what's different. In any case, the TDP for the 3090 Ti would supposedly be 450 watts. That's a lot of power. Another change here would be that the card would use two gig modules for memory instead of the one gigabyte ones currently present. And these memory modules would run at 21 gigabits per second. Honestly, this is kind of great since the modules on the back of the cards used to get pretty toasty. So having them all in the front where they can get cooled by the main cooler is pretty cool. Cool. And speaking of cards with large memory pools, it looks like AMD did the right thing by increasing the VRAM size on pretty much all of its cards. With 16 gigabytes on the high end for the 6800 and 6900 series and 12 gigabytes on the mid-range 6700 models, you can be sure to be able to play pretty much any games at the uh, highest resolutions without any issues. I mean, not at the highest FPS, but still, they can load pretty much everything. That's unlike Nvidia, who unfortunately chose to stick to anywhere between 8 to 12 gigabytes for most of its lineup. So why am I mentioning this? Well, Far Cry 6 just came out and you have the option to download an HD texture pack from the game. The problem? The game requires 11 gigabytes of VRAM to play nice with all the new features enabled like ray tracing and the texture pack in 4K. That means that for Nvidia cards, a good chunk of the lineup like the 3060 Ti, 3070, 3070 Ti and 3080 won't be optimal, whereas a 3060 shouldn't have any issues. Now, what kind of issues would you encounter? Well, as noted by DSO Gaming, some textures might revert back to the non-HD version. At 1440p though, that's not an issue. Now, it's obviously not a huge deal. You can still play the game, but I have a feeling that Far Cry 6 won't be the last game that will need more VRAM than Nvidia cards offer. Also, I kind of want to demystify this. So I want to make a video about actual VRAM usage in games, not allocated. So what do you guys think? Should I do it? Let me know down below. Then we have Intel in the news. So we've heard a lot about their uh, upcoming Alder Lake S CPUs, but it's always specifically about the 12900K. By the looks of it, it's gonna be a great performer, beating AMD's 5950X in single core by around 22%, and in multi-core by around 6% in Cinebench R23. But what about the other models? I mean, 16 core versus 16 core, Intel wins, in Cinebench at least. But what about the 12700K that's 12 cores? Well, leaker extraordinaire Tom 
Appasac just shared some spicy screenshots of the chip. In CPU-Z's benchmark, the 12-core chip scores a whopping 800 points in single-core performance. Unsurprisingly, Intel versus AMD, this beats AMD's 12-core 5900X by around 22%. But unfortunately, the Intel chip doesn't edge out the competition in multi-cores core. It got a score of 9,423 points, which the 5900X beat with around 9,500 points. So Intel's single core improvement might be enough to keep AMD's next generation of CPUs at bay for single core tasks, and maybe for up to, I guess, eight cores, but it's still getting beat by AMD's one year old CPU in multi-core performance, or at least when all the cores are being used, because gaming uses something like six to eight right now. So yeah, that's not that great of a performance improvement. Intel might still go for the whole shtick of saying we're the best CPU for gaming anyways. I mean, six cores is currently optimal for gaming and uh, Intel has eight really high performance cores, so it might still have an advantage there. Really, it's all up in the air until later this month when it's finally revealed and probably I think mid-November when we get the actual reviews. What do you guys think? Does Intel have a chance under the 12900K or is the 12900K their golden child? Let me know what you think down below. Anyways guys, that's pretty much it for the video. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories. As usual, you can click uh, the stuff that are going to appear on my right when they appear on my right. Latest video and subscribe button. Don't forget to stay frosty and I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.